In this video, we're going to be talking about how to find the vertical asymptotes of a rational function. And keep in mind that you're only really going to have vertical asymptotes in rational functions or sometimes in logarithmic functions, but the vast majority of the time you're going to be dealing with rational functions. Remember that a rational function is just a fraction. So here we have a lot of examples of just fractions, and we want to talk about how to find the vertical asymptotes of fractions like these ones. So we're going to start with this first problem. The function is f of x is equal to 2 divided by x minus 3. Well, a vertical asymptote is going to exist for a rational function wherever the denominator is equal to 0, if it can be equal to 0. So what you want to do is you want to take the denominator and you want to set it equal to 0. So in this case, we're going to have x minus 3 equal to 0. If we add 3 to both sides, we get x equals positive 3. So this is the value right here that makes the denominator 0. And of course, that makes sense if you plug it back in. If you plug in x equals 3, we get 3 minus 3, which is 0. You'd have 2 over 0. You'd have 0 in the denominator. And we can't have 0 in the denominator, which means the function is undefined at that point, And we have a vertical asymptote. So x equals 3 is our vertical asymptote for this function, which means the domain of this function is all real numbers numbers except x equal to 3, or you could say the domain is all x not equal to 3. Looking at our second example here, we'll take the denominator and we'll say 2x minus 3 squared equal to 0. If we take the square root of both sides, we get 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. If we add 3 to both sides, we get 2x is equal to positive 3. And then dividing both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 3 halves as our vertical asymptote. And so the domain of this function is all x not equal to 3 halves. And that makes sense because if we plugged in 3 halves, we'd get 3 halves times 2. The 2's would cancel and we'd just get 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 squared is 0. So we have that 0 in the denominator, which we can't have. So that's a vertical asymptote. Here, we'll take x squared minus 1 and set it equal to 0. If we add 1 to both sides, we get x squared is equal to 1. Taking the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to, be careful here, positive or negative square root of 1, because we're taking the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is just 1, so we get x equal to positive or negative 1. So in this problem, we actually have two vertical asymptotes, x equals positive 1 and x equals negative 1. And that makes sense, because if we plugged in positive 1, we'd get 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0 in the denominator. If we plugged in negative 1, we'd get negative 1 squared, which would still give us a positive 1. 1 minus 1, and we'd get 0 in the denominator again. So we have two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals positive 1 and one at x equals negative 1. So the domain of this function is all x not equal to positive or negative 1. And then here for the next function, again, we'll take this denominator. We'll say x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. And we can factor this left-hand side. So if we factor the left-hand side, what we get is x plus 3 times x minus 2 equal to 0. So that means that at x equal to negative 3 and at x equal to positive 2, we're going to have vertical asymptotes and the domain is all x not equal to negative 3 or positive 2. If we wanted to check, we could plug those both in. Taking negative 3 here, we get negative 3 squared would give us a positive 9 plus a negative 3 would give us a positive 6 minus 6 would give us 0. Or if we took 2 and plugged it in, we get 2 squared is 4, plus 2 is 6, 6 minus 6 would give us 0. So our vertical asymptotes are at x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 2. If we look at our next function, sometimes you're going to have something like this, where you'll have a term that's not rational, there's no fraction here, added to or subtracted from a fraction. What you have to do is just look at the fraction and look at the denominator like we have been and set that equal to 0. So in this case, it's just x. So we can say that x equals 0 is the vertical asymptote for the function. And you might think, well, maybe this x throws it off here, and so I can't just take the denominator. Well, keep in mind that if you found a common denominator to turn this entire function into just one fraction, if we wanted to find a common denominator, we'd have to multiply this first term by x over x. We'd have to multiply by x over x, that would give us x times x, or x squared in the numerator. So we'd have x squared over x plus 1 over x. Now we've got a common denominator. We combine the fractions, and what we get is 
x squared plus 1 all over x. So your denominator would still be x, so we just take this denominator, set it equal to 0, and we'd still say that x equals 0 is the vertical asymptote. So you don't really have to account for this non-fraction term. You just look at the fraction and again take the denominator and set it equal to 0. What about this function, e to the x divided by e to the x plus 1? So again, we'll take the denominator, e to the x plus 1, set it equal to 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, we'll get e to the x is equal to negative 1. Then, to solve for x, we'll need to take the natural log of both sides, so natural log of both sides. That'll get the natural log and the e to cancel the exponential function. So we'll only be left with x is equal to the natural log of negative 1. But we can't take the natural log of negative 1, that itself is undefined, which means we can't solve this for x. We can't solve for a real value of x. So because there's no solution to this equation at all, that means there is no vertical asymptote for this function. So just remember when you get to an equation you can't solve, that means there's no vertical asymptote. So now for this one here, taking the denominator, we'll say x squared plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. If we factor the left-hand side, what we get is x plus 2 times x plus 1 equal to 0. Now here's something that we have to be careful of. Notice that if we changed this denominator here to the factored version, x plus 2 over x plus 1, we'd be tempted just to look at the denominator and say that the vertical asymptotes exist at x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. But notice now that we have a factor of x plus 2 in the denominator and in the numerator, which means that we could cancel those factors. The x plus 2 factor in the numerator would cancel with the x plus 2 factor in the denominator. When we can cancel a factor like that, when we can cancel a factor like this one, what it means is that we have a removable discontinuity there. So we actually, at x equals negative 2, we have a removable discontinuity, which means that there's just a tiny little hole in the graph where a vertical asymptote is an infinite discontinuity where we have that vertical line that the graph cannot cross. This is just a small hole in the graph at x equals negative 2. It is not a vertical asymptote because we were able to cancel that factor from the numerator and denominator. So you always have to check to make sure that there's nothing you can cancel from the numerator and denominator. So when we cancel, what we actually end up with is just the function 1 over x plus 1 after we cancel the x plus 2. So what we can say is that x equals negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. x equals negative 2 is a removable discontinuity. And then for the last example, we have f of x is equal to x cubed minus 64 over x squared minus 16. So if we just looked at the denominator, we can factor this denominator as x plus 4 times x minus 4. It's the difference of squares, so x plus 4 times x minus 4. So right away you might be tempted to say that the vertical asymptotes exist at x equals positive or negative 4. But remember, as we just learned in the last example, we have to check the numerator to make sure that there are no factors that we can cancel. So looking at the numerator here, we notice that we have the difference of cubes. We have x cubed and 64, we have 4 cubed, so we have x cubed minus 4 cubed. So if we think about this numerator as x to the third minus 4 to the third, then the base values are x and 4. The way that we factor the difference of cubes is we take the first one minus the second one, so x minus 4, and then we multiply that by whatever we would have to multiply by this first term to get x cubed, so of course that would be x squared. Then we add to that, remember the base terms were x and 4, we add to that the product of those two, so x times 4 is 4x, so plus 4x, and then add to that whatever we would have to multiply by 4 to get this 64 here. Well, that's going to be 16, so we say plus 16. Now what we notice is that we can cancel an x minus 4 from the numerator and from the denominator, so we can say that we have a removable discontinuity 
at x equal to 4, the value that makes that factor 0. And we have a vertical asymptote because we can't cancel anything else. So we have a vertical asymptote at this remaining factor in the denominator, x plus 4. So whatever makes that 0 is negative 4, so we get x equals negative 4. So a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 and a removable discontinuity at x equals positive 4.